So I've just violated one of eBay's selling policies. Sounds pretty drastic, doesn't it? I'm doing a bit of listing outside. The weather is amazing. The lighting is looking good. Here's my listing here. The Kiddies Liverpool full kit. Apparently, though, you are not allowed to sell pre-owned socks on eBay. That's all those perv sock sniffers out there, isn't it? Anyway, I do have a little bit to list today because I went to the boot sale on Sunday. Didn't bother recording it, right? There was only 10 stores there. I picked up a few bits, but it's pretty much run-of-the-mill stuff that I usually find. I went with my son as well. He's really enjoying boot selling at the minute as well. So it was good to spend time with him. Hi, by the way. There is something that I do want to show you that is really cool. Bit of a state in here it is. This was probably my best find here. I've got the complete Brandon Sanderson Mistborn series. The first three of the trilogy, I'm reading the second book there. So that's why that's not complete. But I paid a fiver for all eight books. I always like to have a book on the go over the summertime. I read the first one last summer, so I'll be cracking through the second one this summer. And then when I finish them, they'll be straight up on eBay. Shouldn't take me too much more time just to list all that boot sale stuff up. I want to sort out this Liverpool kit list in here now. Afterwards, let's head to the charity shops. I'm in two minds with this. A Beely coffee pot. Brand new. People have got these listed up for about 40 quid. They all seem to be listed in Spain. £3.50 this one. There's no sold. It just doesn't feel like there's any quality about it. There's no weight about it. Not in the best condition either. I just don't think it's got enough going for it. I'm seeing a lot of this type of item. Stuff you can pick up for a pound fifty and maybe sell for six, seven quid plus a bit of post. Carlin black label pint glass. The print on the front looks decent, no scratching. The thing is I've already got a load of this type of stuff at home ready to list. So we'll leave that one. Looks like the mice have been at that. First find of the day and it's an interesting one too. It is a jelly cat, but this is called a polo neck pika. Still got the tags on there, jelly cat posse. There we are, look. I am polo neck pika unicorn. Jelly cat have released a range where they dress their animals up in polo neck sweaters and they're really collectible. The average sale price for a polo neck jelly cat is about 30 quid, but some of them go for ridiculous prices. The cow recently sold for the best part of 300 quid. There are no unicorn solds but someone has got one listed up for 400 pounds. 400 pounds. No one is gonna buy that for 400 pounds. Either way, I paid two quid for it, still with the tags on. This will be going nowhere near eBay. This will be straight in the Jellycat guy's collection. But Polar Neck Pika Jellycats, keep an eye out. Not heard of this before. Cluedo SFX. Nice quality box. £3.50. I've done a bit of Googling and this is a electronic version of Cluedo. Look at that board folds up there, that's pretty cool. Looks like a bit of assembly required. Quite like the little counters. If all complete and working, it sells for the best part of 20 plus post. It's Miss Piggy. Not found a Miss Piggy for ages. The ones I've picked up before, she has a pink dress. I'm not seeing one with a green dress on. Disney store stamp at the bottom there. How much is she? Five quid. Looking up soul listings, the one with a pink dress does seem to be a bit more popular. I don't think there's going to be enough in that. But cool to see her out and about. I'm due a new comic to read. Check this out. Alien vs Predator, turn on. By Titan Books. Short graphic novel. No price on it, but the art style looks decent. Could be quite a fun read. Check this cool cap out here. That's Pluto. Disney Paris on the tags in there. $2.99. There are a fair few listed, but when they sell, they go for about 20 quid. I'm glad I picked up this hat. That sun is scorching. I tell you what, that's got to be one of my favourite parts of my usual Wednesday routine. I'm about a third of the way around the Chavit shops. Just stopped in for a coffee down there. Got a nice book to read. It's just relaxing. Bit of a midweek breather. It's been a busy week as it is. It's just a little bit of time to myself, proper chill. I feel nice and relaxed, nice and refueled. Let's see what else we find today. Yes, please. Thundercats annual. Marvel. Look at that. 
two quid. Still with the original price on it, 425. Very cool. The maze hasn't been done. What year is it from then? 1991. And it's pretty much in the condition it would have been back in the shops then. Not picked up a pair of shoes for ages, but I like the look of these. Now originally I thought that these were Converse, but they're not. Look at the bottom, Adidas. These are Adidas Nizza. This is a UK size six. Sorry, six and a half. They want a fiver. I'll tell you what, when I turn them over then, saw sort of that. I was going to say there might be 15 quid plus post in them. But for a fiver, the condition is no good, is it? I have to put a bit of work in to clean them up, repair them. I don't think the sale price justifies the work. They got some decent Wii games in here. Potential for CX trading. It's got to be the standard and then Mario Kart. Look at the price on it. It would be a couple of quid CX trading profit. It's still outlaying eight quid to start with. I do like the look of this. Check this out. Retro Adidas tags. Size large. It's just a long basketball jersey. Not affiliated with any team. Number five on the back. Spin through the wash a few times. Embroidered Adidas up there. I'm going to buy that for the gym. I could wear that in the gym. There's no solds. But I'm sure someone would buy that, wouldn't they? It's only £3.50. This is very cool up here, look. MB Games Defender. Family version of the arcade game. Check out that box art. Brilliant, isn't it? 2 dollars I think it's sold. It's only five or six pounds plus post, so there's no point in buying that for resale purposes. Shame, that's the type of game I would have thought would have been quite collectible. They were doing half price clothes in the charity shop, so I had to pick up this size large Wales rugby jersey. It would have been eight quid originally. Obviously got it for four. Printing's pretty good, and it's got all this like weird sticky finish on it. Right time of year, that should go for about 15. Also found this embossed Disneyland Paris mug. It was three quid, so not bargain of the century. This will be a perfect summer holiday seller. You'll have families going over to the resort, coming back, wanting a souvenir when they get home. And this will be on eBay ready for him. And then I've not found one of these Leapfrog pens in a while. This is Leapfrog Tag. I do need to do a bit more research on this because there are loads of different versions. Paid two quid for that. Got the lead. These bundle up well with books. Don't know what the pen will go for on its own. But two quid, it's pretty low risk. I see Lee Child books out everywhere. They're everywhere, aren't they? And I always think, well, they make good bundles. And looking on eBay, on average, they sell for about two quid each in a bundle. Four hardbacks here. Don't know what the price is, but surely that's a tenner, isn't it? That's got to be a tenner on the shelf there. That's Jelly Cat. With tags, five quid. Having a bit of luck with Jelly Cats today. It's always good to find them out in the wild, even better when they've got the tags on. This one is a bit babyish for us. We won't be adding this to the collection, but because it's got the tags on, it's in really good condition. I can sell that as brand new. And to make sure the jelly cat guy isn't too disappointed with selling jelly cats, I picked him up a pair of whale shorts there. They're only two quid. So all in all, right, that was a pretty good day of sourcing. Thing is though, if you take that one jelly cat out of it, it turns into a very average at best day of sourcing. There's been a lot of chat about whether charity shops are dead for resellers. And let's be honest, the reality is I might make 50 quid profit out of the stuff excluding that jelly cat and to put that in context a bit like last week left the house at half nine and i'm back here at three o'clock in that time i've covered 20 charity shops everything i've shown you today is from 20 charity shops financially spending that much time going to that many places it is a complete waste of time considering i've dropped a day from my full-time job specifically to concentrate on going to charity shops Financially, it's a pretty poor decision. So in my personal situation, it's a pretty strange concept that you've actually got to look outside of the money you make to why it's worth doing the reselling itself. Well, firstly, I've always said it gives me an opportunity to look at things for my collection. That jelly cat is a prime example. But then I do think that that is a little bit tenuous. That jelly cat isn't something that I really desire to have in my collection. It's just something that I've come across and will add to it. 
Nine times out of 10, if I was to actually work this day and get the salary for my full-time job, I could just jump on eBay and then buy something that I do really want for my collection. And then because of the extra money I've earned, even though I'm paying more off eBay, it's still probably financially better off than finding somewhere for two, three quid in a charity shop, you know what I mean? Secondly, it's just a nice slow paced day. It's relaxing and I enjoy it. My full time job can get pretty stressful. So to have this midweek dip where I can recharge my batteries, I think that that is pretty priceless. But then I'm always thinking, yes, I've locked my Wednesday off as a bit of a break from work. Is my time best spent going to the charity shops? I could be doing anything today, really. I don't need the money from today to live. I could be using my time today to do any sort of a hobby. Go to the gym, do a training course, go and see family. I could do whatever. The real reality, right, is going around on a Wednesday gives me content for you guys and gives me content to make videos on. Factor that in with eBay, doing the YouTube side of thing, that is a hobby that I do really enjoy. People have asked me, right, is it worth me making these videos, showing you guys the stuff I pick up, increasing my own competition, therefore making it less likely that I find stuff just to make videos? And the answer is yes, because without making videos, I wouldn't be doing the reselling. I can guarantee that. And then, of course, there is the financial side of YouTube. If this video performs like my usual videos do, it should bring in about 50 to 60 pounds. Add that onto what I potentially make on eBay from the stuff I've picked up today, it turns into about a hundred pound day. Yes, not as much as I would make in my full-time job, but still a reasonable amount. So where am I going with this? I think if your aim is to go to charity shops purely to try and make money, it's a very hard thing to do, unless you get lucky and find some one-off individual items. In my own personal situation, I need to find other things apart from the making money that makes it worth my while. For me, it's finding stuff for the collection. Secondly, it's just having a good time and relaxing a little bit midweek. Thirdly, growing the YouTube channel. Good reminder, guys, I'm on my way to 10,000. I think I'm about 50 off. If you're enjoying the videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe. If you are a part-timer like me, it is hard work. You do have that limited time to source and you've got to try and make the most of it. And one thing that does always keep me going is after I've listed a few things up and see those sales come in and actually seeing some of the money come into the bank, that's always a nice feeling. On that note, check out some of these solds. We'll start the eBay sales off with this Furby boom here. I picked this up from the charity shop for two quid, but I had a sticker on it that said sold as seen, basically translation. In the shop, they'd opened it up, seen that the battery compartment was riddled with acid, put batteries in, couldn't get it to work and sold it anyway. I think that's a bit naughty, if it didn't work, that is. Well, I took the risk, bought it, cleaned out the compartment. I turned that two pounds into 15. Shout out James, picked up these two Lego minifigure cushions. These are awesome, right? Official Lego tags there. Those right in a man cave, cushions on a sofa, they look really cool, wouldn't they? James, really appreciate you supporting the channel and the eBay store. Send a pic to my Instagram account, show me where you're gonna put them. Swim fin, I always pick them up when I see them. You can't really go wrong with them. Sometimes they have chew marks or little dings out of them. This was in pretty good condition. Paid a pound for that, sold for 12.50. This is very cool and straight out of Stranger Things. It's a Casio portable color TV. Look at the aerial on it. Thing is, I put batteries in it, turned it on, all the screen works, but because it only takes an analog signal, I couldn't actually tune a picture. I think you need to get a digital converter. Someone who knows a lot more about that than me is bound to get that working. I sold that as it is for 20 quid. I find keyboards proper hit or miss. Sometimes, even if they're decent branded, you look them up and they're just worth absolutely nothing. This one just caught my eye. Whether it's that little computer screen up there, it is a gaming keyboard, so it does light up whenever you plug it in. Buy Logitech, that one sold for 33 quid. These seem to be a thing. Zelfs. In this bag, I've got 10 of them. I paid a pound or a pound 50 for the 10, something like that, and those 10 they sold for 15. Bank holiday Monday, I went on a yard trail and I found a load of Schleck and Papo figures. I paid a pound for them, something like that. This is the first one to sell. This is the only one I've listed up so far. A Papo Triceratops, went for a tenner. And this right was a real surprise. I picked this up at that yard trail. What it is, is a Babyliss Pro ceramic heat up brush. I paid a pound for that and I only picked it up because it said Babyliss on it and I've sold some Babyliss stuff recently. To find this one on eBay was really hard. There were lots of different versions with different heads on, but to find this exact model, well, there were just hardly any up there. I listed this up for 30 quid all in, and it sold within the next day. So it's obviously popular. 
Perhaps it is pretty rare and sought after, but this has actually gone to a hairdresser's. Babyliss. Even though it's pre-owned, that's definitely stuff I'm looking out for. Only three eBay sales over the weekend. Buzz Lightyear with the flashy wings at the back. This is the Karate Chop version. There you go. He went for 15. Sailing the Cat Officer, Brina the Teenage Witch, paid 50 pence for that one. He's gone for 11. And then the Scotty Cameron putter head cover, that went for 45. I had some decent sales over the weekend. Bit of variety and some items with a nice bit of value. This was a surprising game. I literally bought this for the CEX credit. I paid a pound. Simpsons game for Xbox 360. Got the manual in there. That trades in for 16 quid. CEX is selling this for 25. So I thought, hang on a minute. Why am I taking this in for trading? Why don't I just sell it for the 25 quid? I listed it up on eBay. 25 seems to be the going rate. They're not going to sell much higher because you can go to CEX and buy it cheaper or buy it off their website. I took an offer on that one, 23.50. How cute are these? Chippendale from Disneyland Paris. There's a little Disneyland tag there. These Velcro together. You can take them apart, but they belong like that, don't they? I had these priced pretty high. They're in excellent condition. You don't see them too often, and I think they're just a really well-designed teddy. Took an offer, £17 for those. I picked these up in the charity shop last week. It's a bundle of Moana and Frozen bath toys. Thought I'd give them a go. Sold listings look pretty promising. Took an offer, they sold for $12.50 as a bundle. I sold this Humax Freeview player, model 4000T, it's got one terabyte storage inside. Thing is, the condition isn't the best. All around the outside here should be a nice vibrant white colour. It's been left out in the sun there, so that's really gone faded. I do have the original plug with it, and the original controller. But some of these buttons on here are really sticky. If this was in good condition, you're looking at about 120 quid, somewhere like that. I only paid a fiver for this and I had it listed up for a hundred pounds because of the condition issues. I've had a few low ballers come in, send a few offers, but I've been back and forward with one guy. We settled on 85 quid. Now he's got over 25,000 positive reviews. And looking at his store, he sells stuff like this and other just random electronics. I've got a feeling he's bought this. He's seen enough potential that he can make some money in it. For me, it's a nice quick bit of profit. Yes, I maybe could have squeezed a bit more out of it, but I think this is a pretty low risk sale. The buyer knows what he's doing with these. He'll probably strip it down, use the parts or fix it up and sell it on for a bit of profit. Either way, I think we've both done pretty well in that deal. Remember that bag of cameras that I found at that yard trail? I sold the first one of them. This is a Canon PowerShot SX210 IS. I charged the battery up, tested it was working. It's quite cool actually. It's got a little flash that pops up there. I had this listed up for 75 quid, which is already pretty cheap for this camera. Someone offered me 65, we went back and forward, I settled for just under 70. Thing is, because I bought all those cameras for 40 quid, I don't need to squeeze every single pound out of that. I still need to test that Mew 2 camera, that's a nice bit of money in there. And I've actually decided to keep the other Olympus camera. I think it's just cool to have a nice camera. I've never really been into photography, but it's something I could see me just having a little play with. If it doesn't go anywhere, I'll sell it on eBay. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. There are boot sales on this Sunday, weather dependent, and I am planning to go to one of them. Just not sure which one. If the boot sale is big enough, I'll record how I get on. If not, catch up with you next Wednesday.